you ever wanted to recreate a sign or a sports team logo, but you just don't have the right color filaments? Well, that's the problem I'm running into right now. Being brand new to 3D printing, I only have so many colors there. And even if I did have a larger selection of colors, I doubt I would have the exact color I need. Volunteer Orange, Kelly Green, New Century Silver, Gotham Green. These are just a few examples of some seemingly invented colors that sports teams use in their color schemes. It's gonna be really hard to be able to replicate those colors exactly when you want to recreate one of their logos. Today I wanna to recreate the Detroit Lions logo, my home team that I love so much, and their color scheme is white, which pretty common, don't have any problem having white, but the other color they use is something they call Honolulu Blue. I've looked through the storage and I definitely don't have any Honolulu Blue in my collection, so I'm left with a couple of choices. One, I can surf the web and choose a filament color that I think is gonna be pretty close to that. Maybe something like a cyan or like an ocean blue, something in that range. And when I receive that, I can keep my fingers crossed and hope that it's the right color. Or I can do what I've done in the past with different logos and signs as I can mix epoxy and get the color perfect. So I've collected a pretty decent amount of epoxy pigment here. This top row was just a sampler set I got off of Amazon. I believe these are 10 gram uh, jars here and I think I got like 24 for like 20 bucks. It's incredibly cheap, but you do get what you pay for. This colorizing here won't stay suspended in the epoxy. So as you mix it up, it looks good. You pour it into your project and then the pigment will start to settle to the bottom, won't leave you with a really good result. So I would probably steer clear of those. The one I would go with is Eye Candy. I absolutely love their pigment. There's a bunch of science, but it'll stay suspended in the epoxy for longer so that by the time the epoxy cures, you have a nice uniform color. In order to match some of these off the wall, pretty unique colors that these teams use, you can get a sampler bag this is a pastel sampler bag. These are two gram bags and there's 13 in there. It's a decent way to get started. Try to figure out what kind of colors you like. If you're a little bit more adventurous, you can go with the 25 gram jars. These are a bit of a more commitment, but you can get a lot more of these colors in here. And then if you love a color and you decide that's the one you want, you can go with the big boys down here, the 50 grams. And that's what I'm gonna do for this project here I'm gonna go with this angel blue this is a 50 gram and I think this is the perfect color I had bought in smaller samples in the past and I've decided that I like the angel blue for this so that's why I got the big one so that I can recreate the home team logo that I love so much for the friends and family I got lucky coming across this blue in a sampler set so I knew that was the exact color that I wanted if you aren't that lucky your first time around what you can do is mix colors together. Now, if you're gonna do that, I would suggest you channel your inner Gail Bedecker and take really good notes on what you're adding. A quarter teaspoon of this color, a half a teaspoon of that color. I mixed it into three ounces of epoxy. And then that way you'll be able to replicate that color once you nail it for future projects. So my plan for this project is, I'm gonna load up some white PLA and I'm gonna use the 3D printer to basically print me a, I don't know, two and a half D or maybe even a 2D mold. I'm gonna bring the logo into Fusion 360 and anything white, I'm gonna extrude up about a quarter of an inch. And then anything blue, I'm gonna leave non-extruded to basically create a negative space in there. Once I figure it all out and I like the way it looks, I'll bring it over into the bamboo slicer and I will slice it and you can get a good view here of what I'm hoping to achieve. All the white is gonna stay as my white PLA and then that negative space will be plenty enough room for me to mix up that blue pigment that I showed you earlier and pour it into the mold. Here is the, the mold that I'm gonna use. It's worked out pretty well. I guess I could have went a little higher on the walls here. I think I've only got just over an eighth inch high I think it'll work out just fine. And then I've got it on my leveling board here. 
If you're interested in how I made this and why, I will leave a link up there in the corner. You can see the bubble is right there in the middle and that's what you want. So that way, whatever you pour into this mold is gonna stay right here. Hopefully all goes well. I haven't seen anybody mix PLA and epoxy. Hopefully it doesn't uh, do anything crazy like create some killer mustard gas and gas me out. If my calculations are correct, this will create ice. <laughs> oh no, killer mustard gas! <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, it might even just have a smaller type of reaction where the epoxy where it meets the PLA might bubble a little bit. I have no idea what it's gonna do, so I'm gonna try it out. This is what I love about the epoxy is you can see all the swirling in there. You can see just the way the light is shimmering in different parts of this epoxy. I think it's great. Uh, this is why I love using epoxy, especially with woodwork. And now that I've discovered how to use this with 3D printing, I'm gonna be doing a bunch more of this. When I poured this, I made sure that I didn't press the epoxy over the edge or else I would have to clean up the edge. So I left it just shy of the surface there. That's exactly what I want. So I'm just gonna get a Q-tip and I'll just clean up that little bit of blue that kind of got onto the white there, but gonna give this 24 hours, let it fully cure. With this being so thin, shouldn't be any kind of a problem. I'm loving the way this looks. I hope this turns out exactly how I want it to. I don't see any bubbling or anything weird between the plastic and the epoxy. So we might be in the good. Here it is and it worked out extremely well. There was no bubbling, so no chemical reaction between the epoxy and the PLA. I mean, th this thing is absolutely perfect and I love the look of it. I've always loved the look of epoxy. As you can see, I've done other signs and logos in the past. I just, I love the depth that the epoxy gives. And I don't think you're gonna be able to get that with a solid printed uh, 3D filament in there. So. This just opens up another avenue for projects. So a couple quick tips here, guys. Number one, if you have to tool the surface of this epoxy, you're gonna scuff it up. It's gonna become a little bit dull, and then you're gonna have to put in a little bit of work to get it back to shiny. If you don't have to mess with this surface, it stays nice and glossy. This is right after I poured this. This is the 24 hours later. I didn't mess with this at all. I didn't have to tool this at all super easy if you do happen to over pour it well you're going to have a little bit extra work because any of that that oozes onto the side there and then if you're bubbled over the top of the surface you're probably going to want to bring that down flat and that's not the end of the world but it's just going to be a little bit more work on the back end where this is literally i mean it's it's done i didn't have to do anything if you guys are interested in epoxy and all that kind of stuff i'll leave a link to a video up there where I go through everything epoxy related to the signs and how to get a perfect looking finish, just like all of these. So I don't know, this opens up another avenue here. I like it, I like the way it looks. It's exactly the look I'm going for. And that's exactly the color I'm going for. So mixing epoxy and PLA, pretty good. If you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up. If you like content like this, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.